Let's move down here. I saw big fish out there. Perhaps one of the most popular flies, mayfly that is, is a tricorthos. It's a minute fly, the size 20, 22, 24, up to 26. They are difficult to see and the fish go crazy and feed very selectively on them and drive fishermen crazy too. Well, we have a pattern that is durable and is going to float high and give you a lot of good promise on the fish. We will time and shy as 18 so the camera can see all the details. Here it is. We form just a tiny little ball of thread at the bend of a hook, and that will separate the fibers of peccary, which are right here, which we are going to use. Any one of these tiny peccary fibers will make a wonderful tail. So let me find a couple of them. Now, now, these fibers will tie them at the end of the hook and let them split one and a half the size of the length of the hook. We'll place them here. And 
and we'll split them with our fingers and dry the thread in between them like so and then this one here like so we had to trim the axis fibers that we don't need and then we proceed to find another peccary fiber that's going to be much thicker which is going to form the abdominal section now peccary fibers are hollow so they float but the difference in between that and deer hair or elk hair or moose hair is they're almost indestructible this is a fiber if I want to break it, I will have to pull extremely hard to do so. They just don't break. So we'll pick up another one that is not flattened. We'll trim the tip, and that will be the abdominal section of our tricorses. We place it on top. We give it several wraps until we feel confident she'll stay there. And we we'll start winding forward. Very simple. Very fast fly to, to tie. It doesn't have to be all the way to the end. Remember, this flies are very short in body. And the abdominal section, which is the second part of this fly, is going to be made with materials that also give them a very, very high flotation. So you have nothing to fear with this fly. It will always dry high. That's the abdominal section. We will make one attempt to tie down the little stubby of material right there. There we go. Okay. Now, the second part is the polypropylene wing. Polypropylene, as you know, is a material that has been on for a long, long time. It's a yarn such as this. We will cut the yarn and pick up just half of that to put on the hook. We'll tie it right at mid of a hook and split it. We call this a figure eight or an X figure in between the fibers. And let's not worry, they are not very straight right now because when we put the dubbing, it's going to help that. This is an extremely fast flight to tie. There it is. Now, for the thorax, we will use again the cool de canard dubbing and we are going to marry that with the polypropylene dabbing. Now, the cool that give the high flotation in polypropylene, which is already floating, will hold it in place. So first we use, again, the bottle of floating instead of wax to create the additive. Now, the cool that is relatively simple to use. You just use a little bit at a time and place it on the hook. Just like so. And to hold it in place, then you take your fibers of polypropylene dabbing and put just a very few on top. And this will hold the pull the canal in place. So it won't be destroyed by the fish when they bite on it. And now we proceed to wrap this in between the wings. This figure eight works very well, and as you see, it builds a very nice thorax. Now we're going to tie the head. we finished, then we're going to trim the fly. And we do this twice. We know that we don't have to use glues. So that's exactly what we'll do. Then we'll worry about trimming the rest of the fly out. There. 
Now, that's out of there. Then we are going to trim all the extra fibers that we don't need. Spread the wings out a little bit. Yes. And then we try to cut them both at the same time by putting them up over and cut at the same time. There. After we clear, some of the fibers that we don't want, then we have a finish fly. We are coming to a new stream, and we don't know exactly what's in the stream, so we are going to do a little bit of entomology work, which means we are going to kick some rocks and put a kick screen and try to figure out what's in the water before we start casting flies out. All right, Tom? This is a typical freestone stream. It's fine to start with. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got so far. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We've got oh, some... Oh, we have some very big... We have big drake nymphs here. Look at here. Now, a lot of it depends on, look at, yeah. you know what this is? This thousand. Yes. Crane fly. Crane fly, yes. Oh, wonderful. Just, some of this, this, this fly, some of this mayfly nymph, and when we get the camera closer, you see this. They, they're just about ready to hatch. Their wings are almost fully formed in this. The wing casing is showing up very clearly. Now, one of the things that you find besides caddis in a freestone stream like this, there's a lot of sprawler nymphs. Yeah. This is very fast water. Yeah. And these are the sprawler and clinger type Clinger nymphs. type, yeah. Very strong, muscly legs, and with nice hooks on the end. They cling to the, the stream. This particular uh, uh, mayfly, sorry. That's all right. Do not make very good swimmers. This, this nymphs, they just cling for dear life, and when they get this large, they have this dead drift and they roll into some water a ball and try to dig, they dive for the bottom of the stream for safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to stretch this out. Okay. Let's get it out of the shadow too. All right. There we go. That's this, this stone caddis. Stone caddis. This is a case, case caddis. And they'll make their case out of anything. These are green drake nymphs right here. Yes. Oh, and they look beautiful and well developed. These are Rithrogena nymphs right here. Oh, it was. He went back to home. Yeah, he's, he's another one in here right here. Yeah, this is a little, this is a little green sucker. This mm -hmm. is a little bright green sucker, a little brown one. Mm -hmm. this, one this one looks like you tied it. It's mm -hmm. wings around backwards, Oscar. Mm -hmm. Using the same system 
that I did when I tied the tricorthos, meaning the peccary, the cul de canard, also the polypropylene dabbing. We will tie other flies, other mayflies. This is a PMD. See if you can adapt the same system to your home waters. I already selected two fibers for the tail, and we'll place them over here, and they'll be separated by the little ball of th thread that we put at the end of a hook. When we separate these two fibers, then we're ready to put the abdominal section, which is also made of a peccary that's much larger. I already have picked that two here, and you can see the diameter is much bigger. So we'll attach this to the tail end as well. Okay. Now, we will find a way to segment the abdominal section by winding forward the peccary. I will reattach this momentarily. There we go. And here it is. The coloration comes afterwards. First, we just need to make sure that we have a nice, even looking body. Just like that. But one more wrap is going to do it. Right there. And we'll make sure that we attach that peccary fiber. I use my clippers not to ruin my scissors. There. Now, it comes the spinner. What makes the spinner is the tail and also the polypropylene. And here it is. I already cut polypropylene fibers from the yarn. We will place that on top. And we are going to figure eight and just like that. Across the other side. And do about three or four wounds on each side. When we feel they're securely placed, then we're ready to start doing our dabbing. Our dabbing again consists of cool de canard and also the polypropylene dabbing. And again, we will be using our flotten for a way to dab in the thread. First, we put the cool de canard. And not very big bunches, just a small proportions. And again, we are going to use the polypropylene very sparsely to trap the coup de canard, which quite often get destroyed by the teeth of a trout. As you see, it becomes a very smooth dabbing, and that's what we are after. Now we'll wind this in between the wings, back and forth, behind, give those wings plenty of support, there. I need to clear the eye a little bit. And before we start trimming, we are going to whip finish it. We'll do it twice so we don't have to use glues. Now the trimming job starts. We need to trim this so it looks nice before we start painting the quill to match the body. So let's see. We 
we're going to pull the wings up and trim. I will shape a little bit the wings to give it a thinner look. Now we're going to use a marker to mark the rest of the body quail. This is a permanent marker and it will mark those to the color you want. Okay. After you trim all you need to trim, the wings, the thorax, you can see that you have achieved a fly that is going to entice any trout to be taken. Do you think we need to put more Upstream until my hands freeze. Yes. So 51 degree water. The nice thing about it is oh. they revive very quickly. Yes. The brown drake hash is one of the most sought after hatches in the Midwestern streams, being Wisconsin, Minnesota, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and many other states that do have not as frequent and not as a study as this, I still use a brown drake. We will find one right now. First material are hairs from a peccary or a wild boar. These are very strong and they support the way of the fly in the water very well. So we'll take two of them. We try to even them up like so. Then we will be about one and a half the length of the shank of a hook. 
We tie them up on top several times. They will trim the rest that we don't need, such as this. When we get to the tail, we have to separate them. This will be in a spinner style fly, which usually come fall down on the water spinning with the wings spread open and so do the tails. So that is exactly what we are going to try to replicate. Now you see how the tail have a split evenly. And the next material is what we call fly foam. It's a floating foam that I cut in the strips. And then we need to, with the scissors, get a taper like that. And that foam will be applied here. Now we will drop this forward in a very loose style, one overlapping the next, such as that. You can see the segmentation is starting to form, and that's going to be crucial to have the good looks of a brown drake. Also, by using this, you allow the fly to, foam, to float higher because of the foam. This is a closed cell foam made exclusively for fly tying purposes. The next material is deer hair, another material that floats. This has been colored brown, and deer hair has a property that floats, so we'll get a clump of this and we'll cut it just like that. We'll try to take the smaller hair that we are not going to use, clear them. Then we will place the hairs in the hair evener. When the hair is even, you open and take from this side. And again, we'll trim all the hair we don't want. We'll cut this right here. And we'll put this on top of the fly, making sure always that you take all the excess hair out, just like so. Then we will work the thread forward using, as a guideline, the wrappings of the foam. Separate the, the tails and We'll come back in the same mode that we went forward, making sure that we have used the ribbon of the foam as a guideline. There. And now we'll trim the rest of it deer hair. Okay, when we do that, <laughs> we'll finish dropping with our thread all those little loose fibers. Take it 
take a good look. All right. Now, next, we need to have the wings. And the wings come out of a hen back. We'll find two of them that we could use. One. And two. Now, it's very important that we match these two feathers back to back, such as that. Then we measure that the feather is the same size of the shank of a hook. When we get that, we trim the axis. We will place them on top, pinch, cover, there. Now, we need to move this forward, wrap a couple of times, then we'll separate the wings. And I will use some of our, this material, which is new dub. And we'll place this underneath the wing and tie. And go in front, tie again. Make sure it's very nice and stiff. There. Now we need the hackle. The hackle is brown, brown rooster. We need to find one that matches, or two. These two are going to be perfect for the coloring. We'll match them. We'll pick up all the, the extra and cut them off, just like that. Then we're going to trim this. Put on top, in between the two feathers, between the two wings, I should say, and tie it. Excuse me. There. Next, we we'll move the new dove forward. This will give us some volume and hold the wings spread apart. There. Pull them back a little bit. Wrap this forward. Just like that. Two more wraps. We need to leave enough room for the head. Now we take our scissors and trim close to the hook shank, like so. There. Now we'll use our rotating hackle pliers and we'll start winding the hackle forward. See how new dab helped to hold the hackle in place so it will have a better flotation and it become more durable because the base is already supported by the fine hackles. Now you can do this with another type of dubbing, but this seems to be the best for me. So I will keep on using something that is 
got such a wonderful qualities. And uh, we'll, we'll secure that. We'll trim. And then we proceed to wind the second feather. And there we go forward again, just as we did the first one. Oh, yes. Now we need to trim the hackle out of the way. Just make sure that the wings are in the right place, that the tail is nice and straight. Now we're going to move back everything and proceed to tie the head. Now we'll, we finish this before we strain the feathers out again, especially the wings. One more time. Okay. There. We trim this. Move the wings forward. Make sure that everything is right. Underneath and forth. And then we proceed to give them a coat of a fast drying cement. Very light. Protect the hairs and the thread. The same system to tie a brown drake is used to tie the hexagenia limbata and the color changes and the hook is much larger but the system is the same. This is another option you have for a mayfly. We took the larva. Okay. We took the glass fly. Take a look, bro. Look. Watch the hole. Look. Sure. There's a cut throw. You see this lashes right here? There's a cut throw. This is right around the Yellowstone Stone River. River cut throw. Pure strain Yellowstone River cut throw. Orange pin marks. Black tail. Marks, little eye patch under the left hand, little cutlass under the right. Now, watch, watch it, the, the uh, new flower, but you don't want you to get it. Now, let's take a look and see what this guy can do for the Yeah. Besides Oscar's flies. Now, 
If you'll walk the fish behind your knee, yeah, you gotta, that gives him a little shelter. He breaks some of the current. And you let him do it until he is ready to swim away on his own. He's off. <laughs> of all the barrowing styles may fly, the Hesagina Limbara which is fixed in most of the northern states in the United States, is the largest one of the burrowing style. The Fimerella changes molten skin about 13 times before it reaches its maturity, before it emerges as a fly. So it's always available to the fish, and it is a must in any fly box, especially in the northern states of the United States. The first thing we need is some soft hackle from the base of a feather of a cock. We pick up just a little bunch, about half the size of a shank of a hook, and we place it at the end. Now notice that we have made a little ball of thread to be able to make the fibers span. Such as that. In the tail, there always are three well-pronounced fibers. And those will come from the tail of a fasten. So we'll get three of these fibers. And we will place them and measure them about the length of a chunk of a hook. And they will stick out in the back. That would give the illusion of the fly being a lot longer, therefore become a bigger meal for the expecting trout. And the next part is also a clump of fiber from the tail of a fasten. But this time it's a little bit more I have never counted them, but there may be about 12 of them. And we put the tip, we tie the tip in first, just like that. Bring that to the very end of the hook. Now, take a look. You can see that it's well tied. And in a feather, you have the primary hackle and the secondary feather right here. Well, I cut one early, secondary feather, which I will use for the gills. And that goes next. Then we will put some of my favorite material, the new dab. We we'll place it in this side of the hook. The next material is this. a style of tinsel, oval tinsel, medium size, and we'll attach it to the end of a hook as well. And as you have seen so far, one of my favorite materials is this dental floss. Dental floss is waxed and will hold materials quite well. And 
the winding of this is perhaps what takes the longest in to make this fly. You need to achieve the cigar shape as we have done with other and try to get a taper so the fly will hold the shape or obtain the shape we're seeking. Make sure it's very nice and taut. Good, very nice tight. And go back. Not all the way to the end. So you start making that taper. Only probably about this much, and then you go back forward and create that taper we desire. Incidentally, when I lived in Michigan, this fly became my staple fly, as we would say in America, the bread and butter. It became quite used, first by my friends and then by the public in general. And it was baptized with my name, so we call it today the Oscar Hex. And I will wrap some more of this here to make sure that we achieve a very nice and wide and thick body. There. Follow half the way through, turn over, trim what you don't want. And then, again with those pliers, we'll make the body flat. There. Now we will wrap forward the new dub which will add a particular sparkle to this fly. This we will carry to about two thirds of a hook. And it has to be in this light pale yellow coloring. Now, of course, like any flies, you may substitute this material with other product that you may feel that is something more available to you. However, this is one of the best I ever work with. There we go. Just enough. One more time, we'll flatten this. And now we're ready to bring forward this material is going to be the gills of the slice. We see where they're in, right about here. I mark with my fingernails, take it back, and then I'll try to peel all what's left that I'm not going to be using. Now this side. There. And fall forward and we'll attach it to the fly right there. Make sure you use a very strong thread for this because you must apply a lot of pressure to this fly. The string, but we don't need it. There it is. Now, the next material is a medium-sized tinsel, and for that, we're going to require our dubbing needle to learn to help to separate the materials. The first two wounds, you don't need it, but after that, you will. Now, we'll separate. 
pull through, separate. Mm -hmm. and pull through. We'll continue to do the same. And again here. Got too much wound to go. One. There. And the last one. Right over it. There. Then we must trim, but we don't need. And again, with the pliers, we're going to flatten this material. Now we bring forward the fasten. Tying a headless is almost like tying a puzzle. One part of the time, and they all eventually merge to make this wonderful fly work. All right. Before I continue, I will pick up some segments of fasten feather that I have already pre-cut and have them ready so it will save us some time. And we'll take two little clumps of that, one in each side, which we'll be using as a wing case. Must put a little bit more. I'm not happy with what I put there first, so there. Now I feel I have plenty of that. Next, I will attempt to touch this feather that I saved earlier. I saved several of them. They have use. One of them will do. We we'll touch the tip first. You'll be doing a lot of trimming, so don't need to trim the tip. Just attach it right there. And then take the axis out. Now I need some chenille. Gold in color. This is small chenille. And it'll work quite well to make this fly absorb some water and sink to the bottom. When I get what I want, I'll trim the rest. There. Then we'll wind this forward. This is a very bulky fly. It's supposed to be that way. And you need to achieve that in order to get the fish convinced that this is a hexagenia limbata. There. There's a step. We want forward the hackle. Always pull back with one hand and attach with the other one. You continue to see the segmentation show. We need not to be too concerned about just how much cementation we're getting, just enough to make it look good. We rotate this, and we are touched. Trim the excess feather right out of there. Take that. OK. Put your fingers part this.
and then fold forward your fastened tail for the wing case. Now, before you get too close to the eye, you need to trim. As close as you can, trim all the ass's feathers out of the way. There. Now, we're gonna make a very, very thick head in which we're going to mount the eyes. Yes. Now we will we finish this once or twice just to achieve the a solid wrap. The five won't come apart. Do one more time. And if you need it, as I feel I do, a third time. There. And then we'll trim but we don't need it. There. Now let's go through it, make sure that we have all the, all the fishes we want. So the fly before we start trimming. And my first trim is turning the fly upside down. There. And trim all the bottom, obviously. Nymphs don't have legs in the bottom, so we must trim them. And then, in an angle, we'll trim the legs and the gills. Or like that. One shot. Go the other side, do exactly the same thing. And the fly is almost finished except for the eyes. Most of the fissures are there. Sometimes I like to retouch them a little bit. Okay. To put the eyes on the flies, we'll use monofilament and a flame. First we turn the fly on the side and then we apply flame to the monofilament. Then stick it to the eye, the, the head. There, to the, the thread that makes the head. Then we'll trim with our clippers And we turn this and do the same thing in the other side. There. And of course we trim that too. Then Using our huckle guards, we will protect the feathers and the top and proceed to make a round little ball of monofilament. That's done, you go, turn, do the other side.
Once you feel you have the eyes to the same size, then you can paint pupils on them with a marker. There. It's very difficult to make both eyes look exactly the same, but they suggest the eye very well. And as long as the child doesn't mind, I won't mind either. Before I cement and put the finishing glue throughout the fly to protect all the materials, I will try to make sure that I don't have any hollow spots. And then the 60 second glue is juice. Very sparse, just what you need. Now we must do the underneath of the hair too. Yes. You can see how the eyes now become part of that head without making a tremendous bulk. And why not touch up a little bit on the top again? Yes. And one more time here. Oh, very good. Now, we must rotate this to ensure that it dries well. And I believe the fly is finished. Come on, go quite big. <laughs> it's like a bone fish of the Rocky Mountain. They don't run as fast as bone fish by any means. But they have a shape and look like. There. He took the caddis larva. Can you see? Okay, we're going to let him go. Generic nymphs are especially important in fisheries in which you have several types of nymphs that match the color and size. This is one of them and it's called the ribbon fox. Though the material has been changed for modern materials, the name remains the same. The first material we would use would be just any brown feather leftovers, something that you may throw away. You pick up all these fibers and turn them into a usable material for the tail of this fly. About half the size of the shank of a hook, and we begin to tie the materials on. We will use a golden rib. Any golden rib material would do for you. This is a tinsel. It's very thin, and I like it thin, just to suggest a little bit more glitter. 
and also the segmentation of the abdominal part of this nymph. And this material is new dab. This new dab will represent the coloring of the femorella nymph. And again, to make the bulk of the fly without adding any weight, we'll use dental floss, wax dental ribbon floss. This floss will give you a tremendous volume without adding weight, and because it's wax, all materials will stick to it, and also you can shape it any shape you want. And we will see that in just a little bit. Right now we're going to make a cigar shape again, adding plenty of pressure to it. The cigar shape is present in most nymphs throughout the world. This is the longest part of the process of tying any of the flies in which you use this wax dental floss. I am certain that you can find other materials to do this, but for me, this works best, and it's very economical. Add a little bit of pressure, and continue to do this several times until you achieve the size and shape. The femorella nymphs are a burn style nymph and Therefore, they have a more consistent body than the, their cousins, the clingers, which are usually showed and very flat in shape with very stiff legs. Also, these nymphs are extremely good swimmers, while the clingers cannot swim at all. I think we just about got the tape we want there. Now we shall finish this, we'll trim, discard, and now with our pliers we will flatten the body. And we can do this again after we put the new dove. Now we wind the new dove forward and you immediately start to see the wonderful look that give the translucency of the material. This is saving you a great deal of time in dabbing over and over with whatever dabbing you choose to use. and it goes just about right to the middle of that and we will finish that. That's it. We trim this and one more time we will flatten this. There. Now we can bring forward our tinsel and segmentate. Yes. There. There. 
there, there, and there. Most, if you realize, nymphs has gills that are very apparent and they sit right behind the wing case. So to imitate the gills, we're going to use the fuzzy part right here of a regular cock feather. And we put a little clump of this at the side of the hook, right here. There. Now we'll take another clump. And we put it in the other side. Yeah, we need to trim it yet, so. And we'll trim also this. There. Now we're going to use the material I I chosen is a gift ribbon made of polypropylene. And we'll part it like so. Then with our scissors, we fold one time and we'll trim. There. And then we'll attach two. The hook right there. The next part is to put a different color for the abdominal sec for the excuse me the thoracic section of this fly. The abdomen is darker, the thorax is going to be lighter. And we're also going to try to put immediately the legs of this fly. For that, we pick up another one of these wonderful feathers and peel off all the fussy stuff out of there. And this time we're going to attach it this way. We can always trim later. There. Now we'll bring forth the lighter color new dove. We want to do this a couple of times, go over, build that, just like that, and finish there, and trim. Now let's see if we can flatten this a little bit. And then we put this feather forward. These are going to be the legs of our fly. Yes. There. Pull it. There. And we take our scissors and trim the axis. Now, with our dabbing needle, we will help to fold first we're going to mark with a thread where we're going to cut. Then we have to cut one there and then 
like that, and another one here. Now, again, with a dummy needle, we help to fold this in shape. Take all those feathers back. And now we'll attach. Mm. Try that again. Attached to the head. Yes. We must trim what we don't want to use. Out of the way. There. It will take a big head. There. Now we must we finish this. And do it one more time. We must use the pliers to flatten the head of the fly first, which you'll see why it's needed, and the rest of the body. So you can obtain that look that's necessary for a fimerella. And then we must put eyes, and for that we need to use a monofilament, which we used before to do other flies, but it's so effective. So let's see how it works. And now the other side. Then we will protect the materials by using a hackle guard will cover the materials here and make a little ball with heat. The same in the other side. When this cools off, then we use a marker to make pupils. We draw the marker, we cover the head. And we apply quick drying cement, nail polish, glue, whichever you have available. Ah. The legs are different length, you just simply trimmed off with your scissors.
Thanks everyone, Fox. Spicy. Little rainbow. I have to load it because I can't reach any further down. The line is stuck in the gap. Most Freestone rivers has rock clingers. One of them is the Estinonima Foscum. I created a fly called the Asker Tiro, which we will tie now, and you'll see some of the features that you will find in most rock clingers. This fly was originated in a size 16, but today we'll be tying them a bit bigger so you can understand and see all the features. First, of course, we need to put the tail on, and for that we need just one feather of rooster in a brown color, and we just pick just one, like this. And we will use the soft fibers to begin the tail. Just a soft fiber we attach to the end of a hook right here. And we let them spread. Then we trim the rest of it, which we don't need. And the next is fasten tail. We need three or four, trout can count, three or four of this fibers. We measure the length of a shank of a hook and that will be sticking out of the back. Mm. 
Okay, that's the tail of this fly. Next, we take the center section of an eye of a peacock, such as this. And we'll remove one or two of those fibers. We only need one of them, and we tie it at the end of a hook. Bring the thread back, and there it is. To be able to build the fly with dial putting weight and make it heavier, we're going to use a dental floss. This dental floss is waxed and is found in most stores. All you need is just a little piece of this. And we'll attach it to the hook. Because it's waxed, every material you put into it will remain secure. And because it's waxed also, you can shape this with your pliers to any shape you want to, as we will see in just a few minutes. So now, let's wrap this tight, very tight, all the way to the end of the bend of a hook, making sure that all your materials stay together, and then come back. And then we're going to form like a cigar shape, so it is tapered on both ends and fat in the middle. We we'll continue this process as fast as we can. But this will save you a lot of time, and what you usually would be doing is dubbing this material. By using this, you save in all sorts of times and adding a new dimension to your fly time. These materials are very inexpensive. Dental floss, you can find a container such as the one I have for few cents and could last you a tremendous amount of time. Now, you see how the cigar shape is formed, and we're putting a lot of pressure on this to make sure that it stays firm. And firm is really your key word in this fly. Just like that. We are about done. Whoops. Excuse me. There. All right. And then we can finish it off like this, take our scissors and trim what we don't need. And now, using, as we had all along, our flat pliers, we'll shape this flat. Most rug clingers don't have a very round body. It's relatively flat. Now, with a marker, such as this, we will color over and underneath of the fly. And we will wrap forward the peacock. OK, let's do that. One. And two, leaving a space in between. And three. And probably one more time. And four. There. Now we bring our thread back. And we attach that, just like that. There. We'll trim the axis of this. And we get a brown marker. And we'll dab in between, in the top. There. 
Now, a little drop of this cement will help to ensure that this doesn't slide. There. Next, we need more peacock feather, such as this. But this time, we'll take a segment such as this, two of them. Then we'll attach them against the last wound of peacock that we had. And we'll go over several times and trim. There. And now we're ready to tie this part that will simulate the gills of this fly. Next, we must attach the wing case, which will also be made out of fasten tail. Okay, we just simply take a segment of this fasten, put it together, trim the aspects you don't want, and attach to the top. There. Next, we take our brown feather that we had before and pull back all the materials There. So we trim the tip and we attach it to the hook. We have extra, we just put our scissors there and trim. Okay. And one more time we're going to use new dab to accentuate and give the fly the sparkle it needs. These are two different colors. They are going to offer a contrast into the fly. Now, we'll tie them together on top of the fly, top of the wing case. Make sure they're nice and secure. And then we're going to use the translucent one first. That will allow us to build the body and give a bit of a sparkle to the whole fly. I'll roll it in a minute, you can see the underneath of it. We are going to secure that over here, just like that, and we'll cut. Hmm. The next is the orange color, and this is going to offer a wonderful full body contrast. Oh, that looks very nice. Okay. I'm going to cut this. Now it's time for us to bring forth our hackle to make the legs of this fly. Remembering that this fly has a very stiff legs. They are not swimmers, they are clingers. Their legs are muscly 
And when we cut them, you'll see how they will represent the legs of the flies. We get to the end, push those back. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now we trim this feather. Okay. Pick up these materials and put it all back with your fingers. Now we take a dabbing needle and separate all the feathers, all the fibers, before we put the wing case on. How's that? Okay. Pull back the feathers. Yes. And then we'll bring forward the fasten tails over all those feathers, just like that. Pinch it. With our fingers, we'll and we'll trim. We need to finish the hair. It's going to be a very, very fat head. Yes. Just like that. And we will finish before we trim the legs. One more time. Okay. We are going to get our dabbing needle and pull all the feathers to be nice and fluffy. And with our scissors, we'll trim the legs. Once we get the legs trim that we want, we'll give them shape. Okay, now we need to put a glue or finish at top of the wing case. Okay, and that should be the finish Terror.
Some of the most available flies for the trout is the damselfly, especially in slow-moving waters or in lakes. They exist as an adult, tiny, blue in color, and fish recognize them. But when they are very, very young as a nymph, they migrate in tremendous amount of numbers to the shore to be able to hatch. And then it's our time to use a damselfly. The first material is a soft hackle, something like this. And what we use first is this part right here. And we take a just a little clump of this and attach it to the end of a hook that will form the tail. Right there. The second material we will use, it is what we call a nymph riv, larva lace, liquid lace, all of them work. This nymph riv is half flat and half round. And we must make a cut in an angle to avoid to create too much of a bulk. Then we attach it to the hook, making sure that the flat side is down, like so. And give several wrappings to make sure that you have achieved this. Then with the thread, we will build the body so it's uniform in shape. About two more rounds of this. And we'll be ready to start wrapping this material. There. you will try to wrap two-thirds of a hook with it. There. And we'll secure it with the same thread. And then we'll use our clippers to finish off the job. There. Now, let's tuck in all the ends. And then we need to go to a little bit of a fasten tail. This is the fasten tail. It has two sides, two colors, and we'll take a clump of that. Just like that. Roll it. Then we'll place them just there. There. Then this material we'll use is this feather that earlier we have taken all the other fibers out. We'll peel this. And we'll separate, like so. Then we'll attach this end after trimming. There. Mm -hmm. For the thorax of the fly, 
we will use new dab. New dab, this material will save a lot of time and it will give you all the sparkle and the evenness that you need. We'll try to build this. And now we can fold over the feather. Once it's done, we clip right there. Then we'll use our dabbing needle to separate the fibers as we use the new dab to provide us with a very, very nice thick thorax. Always making sure that your feathers stay to the side. We will also trim whatever is actually that we don't need. And at the end, we'll have a beautiful fly. there. And there. When that's finished, we'll trim the new dab. Now we can bring forth the wing case. And we'll trim. the axis of feathers. Damselfly has a very, very big head and huge eyes. And once we form the head, I'll show you a way of putting eyes which you can use for any nymph, especially a small ones, that normally will give you a hard time, this one won't. This will make your job easier, much easier. But we must build a very big fat head first. This is what we're doing right now. Okay, we must we finish. As always, I like to finish twice. And we'll trim. There. With our flat pliers, we will flatten the fly, especially the head like that, 
which will elevate the thorax. And we'll trim those legs later. And now we must put some eyes onto it. For that, we need a hackle guard, and we also need some monofilament. The way to do these eyes with this monofilament is going to allow you to tie flies very small and still put eyes on it. First step, we turn the fly over on the side. Then, we ignite and attach it. When that's done, you can trim Turn the fly the other way and do the other side. Right there. And we'll trim. There. Now, with this hackle guard, we will protect all the feathers behind. I'll show you. We just put back all feathers, and then with a the flame, allow the eye to become a little ball. Now we flip the other side and do that in the other side again. Again, we protect the materials. And we allow that to become a little ball. To obtain a darker eye, we use a marker and we make as a pupil. Turn over. The last step is to be able to cover the fly with a glue that will dry quickly and protect all the shells and the eyes. Now I'm going to rotate this to allow it to dry even. And we are going to rotate that fly so we can see all the details. Another option for a damselfly legs is to use some emule feather. And also, there is a chance to put rubber legs. This will add more movement to the fly. There it is! We got it! Okay, we got one fish in the fighting, and I don't know how big it is, but they surely fight hard in this current. We're we'll trying to get in the slow water over here. We we'll try to land them relatively quick because you don't want to stress this fish out. Oh, it's a rainbow. Not a very big fish, but it surely gives you a nice, a nice fight. Oh, it's off. 
Oh. Well, we got the right fly, so let's go up and see maybe we can get some more, okay? Come on up. Let's go. Come on up. 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 Come on